radio audience. Our guest tonight on this first of a series of unusual programs is an extremely unusual young man. As you've heard our announcer say, he's Robert Wardlow, tallest giant and man's good man. Gentle Giant had humble beginnings. When he was born on February 22nd of 1918 to Harold and Addie Wadlow in the quiet town of Alton, Illinois. This is Alton, Illinois. Nothing seemed off with the newborn Robert. He weighed a healthy eight pounds, but even the best doctor of his era wouldn't have been able to detect Robert's unique physiology. Early 20th century medicine was crude compared with today. Back then, it was common to give patients deadly radium water to cure a host of diseases. Morphine was given to babies who were teething. Gasoline was used to cure lice. A metal chain loop called an ecrosur was the cure for hemorrhoids. The early 1900s were gruesome times. Thankfully, medicine had little to no concept of comprehensive blood work, genetic risk factors, or other markers that would have tipped off the staff that something wasn't quite right with good old Robert. If they did notice something was wrong, you could only imagine the horrible pain he would have been subjected to as doctors and nurses experimented on the boy. While Robert avoided the tormenting pain of medical experimentation, unfortunately, he wasn't able to avoid exploitation. But while his later life was rather bittersweet, his childhood went about as good as you could expect from someone who could reach world record status. Robert was the oldest of five Wadlow siblings, and his parents were around the average height, with his dad standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. But Wadlow's life took a strange turn at a young age. When he was just five years old, he was almost as tall as his dad, standing at 5 foot 4. Then, just three years later, Robert was already taller than his dad. At just eight years old, Robert could pick up his dad Harold and carry him up the stairs at their family home. As he got older, he started to run into growing pains, arthritis, and even nerve damage, but that didn't stop him from trying to live a normal and fulfilling life. He joined the Boy Scouts at age 13 and got a custom uniform, sleeping bag, and tent to fit in with his peers. By 17, he was over 8 feet tall. By then, he was getting nicknames like the Gentle Giant or the Alton Giant, but he kept on striving and graduated high school in 1936 and went on to enroll in college to study law. Robert joined a tax-exempt fraternal organization known as the Order of Demolois. The Order of Demolo was a group for young men that were sponsored by none other than one of the most juicy conspiracy-heavy organizations ever, the Freemasons. Robert would go on to join the Freemasons who were supposed to support him on his journey through college, but Robert never got to study law. Instead, he was enticed into joining the Ringling Brothers Circus. He joined their ensemble cast, formerly known as the Freak Show, and became a celebrity at his own right. On top of his skyscraper height, Robert Wadlow weighed a whopping 500 pounds, so his feats of strength were also superhuman, making him a star attraction. The circus took him to Madison Square Garden, where he always made it into the center ring even though he defied the promoters who tried to pressure him into wearing a top hat and a tail. Robert owned his situation and kept his dignity in spite of his circus circumstances, and it paid off. After his time with the Ringling Bros, Robert Wadlow went on a second tour in 1938, but this time for the blandly named International Shoe Company. In return for advertising their products, Robert got free shoes which was great considering he wore an enormous size 37 AA. Through all his ups and downs, Robert kept his gentle spirit. In a radio talk show, the gentleman giant was asked if he was bothered by people staring at him, and in his own calm style, he simply said, no, I just overlooked them. Uh, Robert, uh, tell me, do you mind uh, people staring at you when you're out walking out on the street? Oh, no, I just overlooked them. <laughs> now, back home, uh... After he got free shoes the size of a small microwave, Robert became a master mason at the Grand Lodge of Illinois AF and AM. That same year, on July 4th of 1940, Robert went to another press appearance at the Manistee National Forest Festival. Throughout most of his adult life, 
Robert Wadlow had to wear leg braces to get around. These very braces that helped him stand as tall as a tree would be his downfall. During his guest appearance at the Forest Festival, one of his leg braces malfunctioned and scratched up his ankle. Robert already barely had any sensation in his legs at all, so he was most likely unaware of just how badly the brace irritated his ankle. That tiny moment led to an infection that quickly went out of control. Doctors tried to operate on the infected ankle and give him a giant sized blood transfusion. Robert also suffered from an autoimmune disorder, making the infection far worse than they could have imagined. Robert died in his sleep at just 22 years old and only 11 days after his last professional appearance on July 15th and was buried in a coffin that measured over 10 feet and weighed over 1,000 pounds. Robert Wadlow was laid to rest in Oakwood Cemetery in his home city. What was it that doctors miss? How did Robert Wadlow grow to become the tallest recorded human being in history? The reason was that Robert's pituitary gland located in the base of the brain had become overactive. The pituitary, much like the better known thyroid gland, directly relates to the size and growth of an individual. Robert's pituitary gland was much larger than normal, which caused it to produce much more hormones than the human body was meant to handle. The main culprit was human growth hormone. Normally, the body will alter its release of the growth hormone at the end of puberty, and that's when the adult height is reached. Since Wadlow's pituitary gland produced too much HGH and never stopped producing it at the same elevated level, his body never got the signal that he was done with puberty and he never stopped growing. If Robert would have lived past 22, he would have kept growing, even if he was forced into a wheelchair and unable to sustain his own weight. This is a condition known as acromegaly. Acromegaly is caused by elevated HGH, but it comes in rarity of forms. In some instances, people just have larger hands and feet, but in rarer cases like Robert, the entire body can become gigantic. HGH is actually a substance in use today to help prevent stunted growth though it only works on children and teens. It's also in use for seniors to help improve hormone levels and increase their standard of living. At the same time, human growth hormone is also used by bodybuilders and athletes to get a little bit bigger, though it might have dire consequences as we've seen with the tragic death of the world's tallest man. If you're ever in Illinois, you can visit the Alton Museum of History and Art where they have a permanent exhibit on the gentle giant. There, you can see Wadlow's school desk his oversized graduation ring. And if you take a walk to College Avenue, you can see a life-size statue of the man himself. Viewed and thought of as just one of the guys. He had always been bigger than everybody. He'd been bigger than the teachers in grade school. He was bigger than all the students. He was bigger than every adult. He was bigger than every car. He was the biggest thing, and he always had been that way. So the people here, his classmates, the teachers, the people in the church, and the various civic groups that he belonged to, didn't really react adversely to him. He, Robert had always been that way, so they didn't really think of it as anything out of the ordinary. Making ends feet is certainly a big job when it takes size 39 shoes to fit them. Two into one do go. Here's the owner, Robert Wadlow of Chicago who at the ripe old age of 17 stands 8 feet 4 inches in his socks and incidentally seems to be quite beyond the reach of young women. Every time young Robert goes through a doorway he scores a duck. And this is Robert's father, a mere dwarf of 6 feet. And I believe that Judge McElroy, our city manager, meet him. Mighty glad to meet you, Robert. The judge wants happy to, to have you here. He wants to run a foot race with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right on a hundred yard day. That's long. Wait along. Wait along. All right. Whenever you get ready, I call out. <laughs> All right. You must come up and see you sometime. I'm Robert Wadlow, 12 years old, and I weigh 240 pounds, and I'm, well, I'm about seven feet tall. Uh, these boys grouped around me are 
about the same age as I am, they go to the same grade. Uh, I like to play baseball, basketball, and football. If I grow up, I hope to be a big man like Lindy if I can get a plane big enough. <laughs>